Enjoy this message courtesy of Overcomers Assembly Studio. In life, you've got to make a choice, right or wrong. We pray that you are blessed as you make the right choices in life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. That is our heart's desire to this great God. And it will lift us up indeed unto higher ground in Jesus' mighty name. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you have been doing for us today and what you are set to give us. We ask that you bring understanding by your spirit to the instructions that you are giving us and the words of encouragement and even the anointing to be able to achieve all that you are promising us today. Lord, we are returning honor, glory, adoration to you in Jesus' name. Thank you as you use me mightily to conclude what. I mean, the message that you want your children to hear. And let the impartation be for the entire journey of their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Blessed be your name forever. For we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Today, God wants to encourage you that He has been the one that has been charged of the journey of your life. Otherwise, it would have been different from what you are experiencing today. So today's ministration is on divine promotion. Promotion. I put it in two syllables. Motion it's what everybody, every individual, every living thing does. Motion, you know, you, you know, even when a child is born, immediately is, you know, he tries to see how he can imitate or move from being confined to a certain place. He wants to move. So we all wish to move. We all wish to have motion. But there is what I classify as pro motion indicating the positive side of movement. And there is what is called D, motion, which is the negative side, right? Because as you have pro motion, you also have D, motion. D, that's the negative. And then again, you have no motion. It is possible to stand or sit where you are and make no motion. So we're talking about what we all feel like doing, what we all feel like achieving. Promotion. That is positive motion. Pro. And it is my prayer that we will always have this positive motion in every areas of our lives, in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Because that is what is characterized by growth. A child, when he's born or she's born, she is able to have only few motions. That is not remarkable motion. But after a while, he wants to be able to crawl. You know, tries to crawl, at least make a better motion than just, you know, paddling or just staying in a location and trying to. Then after a while, he stands up, he makes steps. Then after a while, he starts running. Start running over the, over the places. Disturbing everything. He wants to know what is going on around him or her. So we all try to make Promotion. We all try. I mean, that is our heartbeat. We try to achieve this. 
as individuals, even corporatively. That is amongst our brethren, amongst our friends, we want to have promotion. Promotion in different areas of life. Self-discovery, personal growth, nurturing relationship, you know, and so many other things in life. And mind you, we are talking about divine promotion. But we, while we know that we have levels of promotion that our capability can carry us, right? Our influences, our friends, our colleagues, our, you know, so many people who are affecting our life one way or the other. So that means we're talking about the genetic factors, we're talking about environmental, we're talking about the health, you know, medical, uh, personal lifestyles and so on. But these are all limited to our abilities and whatever we are able to, right? No wonder when Elijah, in the, you know, in the passage that we read, first King 19, when Elijah was running away from the so-called uh, challenges of the day for him at that time. Remember, he even thought that people are killing men of God and they finally killed virtually everyone except himself alone. And he started running. What did he do? First, he should run away from those who were seen as the killers. So he ran to he ran far away from them. And of course, you no know, after running for long time, you get tired. So you try to find a place to sleep. So you decide to sleep under a tree. And Adventure, you did not see the kind of promotions that happened in the, you know, in the Bible verses that we read today. You know, an angel woke him up. He said, eat. When an angel asked you to eat, where, where did the food come from? Something came from somewhere that's, you know, that you cannot, I mean, you did not plan, you did not, you know, you did not, it wasn't by your ability. There was nobody around to prepare the food. So, somebody that is from nowhere, spiritual now, right, provided that food. So we're talking about that dimension of promotion that is not from just people around you or yourself. The food was provided. <laughs> not only that, I would say, oh, yes, of course, God can make it to, 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 to meet with the food or meet with something along your journey of life and you just pick it. And then, you know, you eat it, you enjoy yourself. That would be okay, right? Probably for 24 hours. But he was working up, he had the food. I mean, the cap when you eat food, what you need for a particular time, might, might just be only the fish pool, right? But said so eat. So that your stomach, which is a storage, can have enough. But that stomach is only elastic up to a point, right? You can have whatever capacity you have, there must be a limit. So God asks him, well, then you ask him, okay, he, then he wrote him up, stretch your capacity a little, you know, like God said, I don't know to stretch our tent because he wants to bless us, right? 
And imagine now eating probably lunch and dinner. And you say you combine it, you know, I mean, within a very short time, not up to like eight hours that we normally have our lunch and dinner. Because the stomach was full, right? And God now told you that that meal will be used to run 40, 40 what? 40 days. Be used for forty days. Can you imagine that? That you might be. Can you might be give you food? Okay, like we'll serve it for now. I tell you, please don't eat the next forty days. Just relax. So you know we are limited. We're only doing what we can do. Even our food that we, you know, that we try to provide cannot last you for seven days. We don't expect you to eat the food and then you don't eat again until the next Sunday. No, because it's the only, I mean, the, the, the human promotion that we have. Just, I was just encouraging. The one that we're talking about now is divine. It's by God, from God. And to you, it's children. And that big God that we're talking about is always by your side. He's always in the temple that we you know we mentioned in recent times. He's always with you. He's always abiding. He's always present. He's always willing. He's always loving. He's always accommodating. Always. He's always forgiving. Always. Always, always. Amen. Amen. And eventually. You did not hear it well. When in the second Bible reading, when Elijah, a very powerful man of God that was seen inside the bedrooms of the traitors of enemies, when it came to his own challenging time, and he thought he was the one left that they could not kill. So there are thousands of us sat there, thousands. So you see us there now, we're not too many, right? But even then, there are millions all over the world that God is using. So you are just part of the program of God. And he still wants to use you more. That is why I told uh, Elijah. And you know, per adventure, you are thinking that, oh, no, I'm weak, I'm this and that. Elijah, as strong as he was, he was also a weakling. Apart from the fact that he admitted or he assumed that he was the only one left, when he was even fed, when everything was supposed to be okay, he still, you know, he didn't ask, but where am I going? He, ran, he thought the food was for him to go and touch. To go and preserve himself. So, whatever the challenges. I told myself, yes, everybody is political, but we should see ourselves beyond politics. I don't want to pray for any individual to get to any position again in life. I want to pray for the will of God to prevail so that the best that God wants to use for that moment to be the one that will be there. Not the thinking of man. Not because, you know, things are happening where we have some relationship or we have it. No. Let it just be the plan and purpose of God for that season. And for you who are aspiring, let the time of God come for you. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes, use it appropriately. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And then you'll be free to enjoy. What, where God is taking you, what God is telling you, and you'll be able to act as the vessel, the arbiter of the truth, that is the word of God, the presence of God, and then you will know that everyone is your brother, your sister. 
everybody is your friend. You have to love everyone. And you have to pray for each and every one so that God will impact them to do what they are supposed to do for themselves and for you and for everybody. That is the way it has to be. So look at him. This is Elijah. Elijah, even for his own motion, the promotion that was given to him by being fed freely from heaven, he thought the best way to use it was to go into the cave. He knew that that's work for him. So, by the venture, God has given you some instructions before. You need to ask him properly. You see how God broke down what he wanted to do to so Elijah. He broke it down one by one. One by one. Don't make mistake. This one is for this. This one is for this. And I pity those who are trusting in the arm of flesh, who thinks their blessings is because they have ability. Or they have the way we don't like the advice. Keeps, you know, know that it's only God that blesses. And it's the gift of God that makes it rich in itself. I mean, that is the real sense of that word rich. That would not add any sorrow to it. But for any other ones, that's my opinion. You know, I mean, you know, I don't know if you have listened to so many rich people on their secrets. I mean, of course, you might not be there physically, but we we'll read their reports. And most of the things they regret is not making use of the resources God puts in their hands the best way they should, they should have. It is my prayer for you and I that we will not see any blessing as an aggrad, you know, as amassing wealth to ourselves. But rather, as a vessel that God is using to be a blessing to the generation that we belong to God. Elisha that was to take charge after Elijah was not a pauper. It was from a very rich family. You saw how he decided to say, okay, if that is what God wants, I better leave this and move on. And I found out that God does not demote. I found that out in so many areas of life. God does, I mean, you know, of course, God is a God of principles. He will check you if you really understand his principles very well. So, for example, if you are coming from a background that he has test, he's testing you or he has tested you with some riches, let's put it in a figurative way. Let's say he gives you a thousand dollars and see how, oh, how you operate and manage the thousand dollars. If you spend it on, you know, privileges, that is things that are not important, privileged things you know, that are just to probably keep, I mean, keep you in what you are used to doing, things that are not glorifying God, and things like that. Of course, you will pass before giving you something else. But if he says he has given you a thousand dollars, of course, let me let me quickly add it. Now you know sometimes when God gives you resources, and he knows that the resources he gave you, you are not using it to edify the body of Christ, that is your own vessel. Rather, you are using it to destroy yourself. If I'm a good father, I will not give you anything more. I mean, of course, I'll give you in pieces so that you can survive, right? But I won't give you something that is external, something that is more than ordinary. I mean, for example, I gave you $10, and the $10 
you go to buy drugs, add drugs. You know, of course, if I give you more, I know you will go and buy more drugs. And you are destroying yourself. You are destroying the vessel. You are destroying the temple of God. It's just natural. I'm a good father. I'm a loving father. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want you to destroy yourself. So I check that out. I give you in pieces. But if I know that you are using the money very well, from 10,000, I multiply it. And God does not just act, He multiplies. God multiplies. So I'll give you, instead of 1,000, I'll give you 10,000. Let me see how you manage this 10,000. And I tell you, God is not limited. If God wants to give you 1 trillion, it doesn't take him time to do it. What does it take to be, to be, to be a millionaire in this country? It's not money. It's not money at all. It's the gifts of God that passes all understanding. I've seen people in this country who came from a very low level. Incidentally, not even born and bred here in this God's own country. Our present country that is flowing with milk and honey in the world. Right? Just the idea of technology, developing some softwares. People are becoming millionaires. You don't, you know, so you don't need money to become millionaires. It's just an idea. Look at what people do not have. But you can't know it unless by inspiration of God, by the Holy Spirit. This light, when, how did it come? We would have been in that total darkness forever. Except we wait until when the sun shines or when there is moon and then we'll go to, 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 to enjoy ourselves talking about storylines, folk story and all analysis. But when God inspired, just like this, you become a change agent. And of course, whatever you say, it is your price. It's an open check. So it's not about money. It's not about your background. It's not about where you come from. When he wants to promote, he does it. But he wants to know if you are faithful or you are going to be faithful. And of course, he tests you. He, you know, God makes you to go through tests. Yes, because you need to be tested. Otherwise, you will destroy yourself. It gives you something and then you use it unwisely. Then you destroy yourself. And he does not want to blame himself for giving you too much. So he has to give you what he knows he needs for time pass. And that is why I've collectively been representing you to talk to God. We have tried too long on this mountain. We want to move to a higher ground. We want inspirations from everybody. From everybody. I tell you, I was going to Las Vegas, I think a couple of weeks ago, and I met a lady you know, who was also doing great work for God. She knew I found that. I said, I'm not hearing from God like I used to hear. You know, I was just feeling I should pour out my heart. And it's like, um, distractions are too much. And well, before, I mean, I wasn't as, I mean, I was expecting myself to be the one to take this person. But when God now, I said, oh God, you know, I want to hear, I want to, what do you have for our children? For every stage, you need to listen to God. <laughs> when he says, you are going there, which is our, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a promotion that is so sure for most of us that are working on that divine inspirations. That, I mean, like I believe all of us here that we know God is God. God is our father. We know we're going somewhere. We know we're going to spend eternity with him. 
the the, the what that the, you know, do you know you know when God showed you this I was surprised that's when we start crying for some people do you know that we are making a big we are making big mistakes by doing that somebody who is dead in Christ is out has just gone through the best promotion that could ever happen. The best promotion. So why are you crying? I said you are crying for yourself. You are crying for yourself because you don't know if you will end up dying in Christ. Don't pretend to cry for that person. Why, you, why should you cry for that person? The person is gone to glory. He's gone to enjoy eternity. He has died in Christ. So what are you shedding your I mean your tears for? Except, <laughs> oh my goodness, except for your own belief. Except you don't have confidence that you are going to enjoy that person in Christ. So that is why I don't look at even small boys, small children. When they glorify, they become your senior. <laughs> they are becoming your senior. If they die in Christ, they become your senior. Let us salute them. If they die in Christ, of course, who are you to judge anybody? Who are you? The, the, the ministry of judgment is not given to us. It is entirely. So you don't know if you are to die in Christ or it is you that is in it. So don't ever compare notes. Don't ever compare notes because you are, you, God has not made you judge on, any, or, you know, on anybody. No. I wish we could have more time to relate to this, listen to the Holy Spirit. But I want to assure you that even in your body, at least when we talk about the child, there's divine permission when it comes to it. I mean, living with us. I've seen people going down and then coming up. It all depends on the grace of God. It's not something that we can say, yes, we know how to do it. You will be making mistakes. The only thing is I listen to God, and I tell you, most of the time, it is not by drugs. It is still something that you will least expect that God will use. It's not always by drugs. Sometimes, of course. <laughs> I remember right now, I had an accident sometimes, and my eyes were not able to open to look at sunlight. Even like we're standing like this, I won't be able to look at anything that is bright. And it was something that was disturbing. You know, I had to look for shades, I had to do it. Until I met a doctor, who now ask me, you know, how are you feeling? You know, I said, it's like this. And the lady, a very close in-law of mine, told me to use a medication that is the least that you can ever think of. I don't know if you heard about Indosit. <laughs> Indosit is just a painkiller. And he said I should go on Indosit for like three days. Indosit. It doesn't make sense. But it's because, you know, she was a trained doctor, I took it. And lo and behold, everything just vanished. There are other challenges that I don't need to talk about here. But I tell you, small things, you know, that you least expected. Even sometimes orange, sometimes garlic, sometimes, you know, different. I mean, God has given a lot of grains, vegetables, and all manner of things that are natural to promote you in terms of your health. Just listen to him. Listen to him for every situation. 
So this is my prayer for students. Of course, you can be better than your lecturer. <laughs> your lecturer can see your mark and say yes. Instead of giving you A, I'll give you A plus. Those are divine promotions. In every field, every areas of life, God will supersede the natural promotion. For everyone that will listen to this ministration, including myself, in Jesus' mighty name. I don't want to forget something. There are times where you will be weary, that will be as if you are discouraged. As if it is so difficult. It looks as if it's like an end. <laughs> oh my goodness. God have life lines. Life lines that will be comforting. That will be so useful that you will feel that what you have passed through was like a dream. I have a testimony of how IRS, you know, wanted to embarrass our recent. And they were asking for a payment that was beyond what I mean, I could say. The person, or let me even say directly, when I'm thinking that I will be able to pay in a year, you know, I was thinking, okay, probably let's spread it to three to six years. But within 24 hours, the same man has called me back. Oh, we saw there was a mistake somewhere. <laughs> you know? So when God wants to intervene in any situation, know that. It's not about mine, it's about your ability. Everything will just disappear. I said, oh, this, this was a dream. I'm talking because I'm a living witness of the goodness of God. And what he's able to do. He wrote it off. You know, and you know, say, okay, uh, you know, this thing. Made a mis oh, yeah, there's a small miscalculation. So, so, and so, you know, something that, yes, I could just put my hand in my pocket and say, okay, you know, yeah, now, now you are being used by God. Mm -hmm. That is the mighty, you know, institution that we all fear. So, no matter the power in the world, God can still help His own. God can still promote his own beyond whatever frustration that is up to. Amen. So I would want to pray with us because of time. I know we would have loved to have a lot of opportunities. But one thing that is sure is that we have to realign ourselves within for us to be able to qualify for divine permission. So it's not everybody that will be qualified for divine permission. Once he sees you surviving, he, you know, he allows you to continue until probably when you come to your senses and say, yes, I need to go beyond this level that I'm moving. I want to go higher. And in going higher, it is not for you. It is for the glory of his name. Because he needs to be assured that you, you know what you are doing, that your plan and purpose is not self-glorified plan and purpose. It is divine plan and purpose for your life that he has made, even scripted. And that is why when you look at our plans, there is no two, you know, veins or lines that are the same because he has scripted what you are going to achieve here or not. The goals that you are going to achieve, what you are going to do. And when he knows that you are on the right path now, he knows that you are making the promotion, you are making the positive motion. And he now wants to help you to be able to do it better. And then he makes the divine promotion. And so at the end of it, it becomes a win-win situation. Because from glory to glory, he wants to continue to lift us. 
So, and it is my prayer that today will be a major turning point in each of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And for us, we are going to rededicate ourselves, not just to accept him as our Lord and Savior, but to be willing to humble ourselves, to listen to him for time, for season, and to understand that it is his blessing that make it rich, and I will not add any sorrow. And then we just hold on to that. I tell you, some of the things that some of us are doing, when you listen to him, you find out that if it is, for example, money that you want to make, it is, I mean, it might not be where you are working right now that you are going to make that money. Am I speaking to someone? It might be somewhere else completely. I've seen a situation and it's all over the world where you just stand where you are, you allow God to talk to you. God has provided some people that will be the manufacturing outfit somewhere, like us now here in the US, most of the things we make in China. You just sit where you are without even lifting anything, without having anything, apart from the IT that I talked about. Then you talk to some people all around there, people who have the capacity, and you tell them if this is what they want, okay, Yes, it will, be come, it, will be, it will come to their doorsteps, their warehouses. And it, so it shall be. And those people will just exchange notes like that and everything will be okay for you. It comes with inspiration. There's nothing that is not possible with this thing. Under rain, under shine, on that peak, on that peak, whatever the situation, whatever the situation, and don't feel that you can run, you, know, you have to practice on how to run before it will happen. No. That is a storyline. Because of time, Elijah ran, overrun, chariots, that is what we call us. Us is sometimes they run like 300 times more than men. You know, it was running faster. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't ordinary. So I want to pray with us today. That God will be merciful on us. to meet us at our points of needs. We'll allow this ministration to sink into our heart. And we will remit on it so well that it will take us to a new level. And we enjoy the comfort of this fellowship. And that per season, per time, we will listen to him. We will embrace him. He will guide us. And he will favor us. He will favor us in all situations, all situations. Let them have scripts written. Let them, you know, computer programs that you have to, you know, satisfy before something is given to you. No, you will suspend all those things for your, on your behalf. Father, this is the anointing we receive today. We want to hold on to it. And for your children who will be listening to this illustration, who are yet to receive you as Lord and Savior, we ask Lord for grace to be extended on them. As I pray for them right now, as that you minister yourself to them, let them decide to give their lives to you to manage. Let them decide to hold on to you. Let them decide to embrace you. Let them decide to listen to you. And Lord, because they are starters, give them blessings of make for children to nurture them, to make them to be able to be strong enough to eat hard food and to be able to understand that 
that there is need to be painstakingly rely on you during challenges. And that's when we move from this level, we shall continue to be from glory to glory for us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We say we don't be exalted, but we are praying in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will call on Dr. Odisha Gadi for you to round up for us and pray for each and every one of us. For a new season, indeed, in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and Lord our God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the all-knowing God, the all-powerful God, we yield ourselves again to you today. Father, because we know promotion does not come from the west, east, or the south. Promotion comes directly from you. Father, we therefore call upon you over our areas of need that you will touch each and every one of us and uplift us in glory in power, in favor, in mercy, in compassion, that we will all enjoy divine health all the days of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, the one that can do all things, the one that has never failed. Father, you will not fail over each and every one of us, but your glory and your goodness will be upon us and upon our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. And as many people that will listen to this after Lord, Father, we commit them unto your hand. Touch them. Let them yield to the call of salvation. Let them come to know you as Lord and Savior in the mighty name of Jesus. The vessel you've used, Lord, we bring the vessel before you that you will replenish him afresh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That a fresh Amen. oil will come upon him. That, Father, you will uphold him and uplift him in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we step out this week, step out with us in glory, in beauty, in favor, in anointing, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We also commit every troubled area in the world onto your hand. Let the peace of God in Christ Jesus, let it reign in those areas. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Our Lord is good. And all the time, God is good. God is love. <laughs> all the time, God is love. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Enjoy the next week, the next month, the remaining part of the year, and yes, and yes to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your prayer with me. The food is blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.